Uh, first, if you could introduce yourself just for uh, for our purposes. I'm uh, Robert Jarley, director for Protect Arm and Oman. Mm-hmm. And where are you from? From uh, Red Lake. I noticed that you've been carrying the staff today. Could you talk about the significance of that? Well, each, each Eagle staff has its own meaning. So the staff here is called Cherish Children's Staff. Uh, it was gifted to me in a dream. Uh, I had a foster daughter who was murdered by her uncle. And uh, so the staff was made in honor of her and also made in honor of children who are in foster care and uh, adoption. And if you look at the if you look at the staff, there's one missing feather here. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's for uh, my, my foster daughter who was murdered. What, what, I'm just stunned with the amount of emotion that goes into that, something like that. So, so you carry this, and uh, you're here in Duluth. It's idle no more. I mean, talk about that. Well, I carry that a lot of powwows. If you go to powwows, they have eagle staff in front, and uh, so that's usually where I where I carry the staff at. Uh, I bring it to events like this here. This is probably the fourth or fifth time the staff has been up here in Duluth uh, for an event. Uh, it's also been a part of uh, some ceremonies, so it's used for a lot of different uh, different purposes. There's been, uh, in addition to this I Don't Know More movement, we have uh, issues around wolves and issues around land management. And now just this week uh, they announced, a, uh, I guess, a month of awareness about the trafficking of girls and women. A lot of these things touch deeply the Native American community in our region. Well, one of my reasons for being involved with I Don't Know More is the uh, diminishment of treaty rights and uh, diminishment of environmental protection. Uh, so that's not only happening up there, that's happening down here. We have a state legislator which is passing laws that affect our environment like the wolves. Uh, my issue is mainly with mining, uh, with mining and wild rice, and uh, you know they're passing laws to make it easier for corporations, for extractive resource uh, or, uh, companies, to build mines in northern Minnesota, and uh, it's kind of you know that's what's going on up in Canada. So uh, I look at it. So I don't believe in a border. The border is mythical to me. And uh, the problems we're having up there uh, correlate to a lot of the problems that we're having down here. You know, my grandfather, who's non-native, uh, would tell us the exact same thing about the border. That it's, uh, you know, he'd say, look at those borders from space. They sent those guys up there and there's no line there anymore. How, uh, and when I look at this rally, it's, it's being led by Native Americans. Uh, this staff and a lot of Native American women, but there's people of all races here. Talk about the the connections between cultures and across cultures with shared values, for example. Well, usually what I talk about when I give a speech, uh, for example, I was at the Capitol a couple of days ago and I gave a speech at a rally, but uh, I try to make those connections between uh, Natives and, and non-Natives. And usually what I will tell them, I'll give them a teaching of the Four Orders of Life, which is a real simple teaching that was given to us long ago. And uh, Four Orders of Life, Aki, the Earth is first. The second order of life are uh, the plants. The the third order of life are the animals. And human beings are last. So the animal, plants, and the earth, they can exist without us. They don't need us to be here. But because we're last in the order of life, we have a responsibility and and duty to take care of those other three orders. And uh, and, and that's just not inclusive of Native people. That includes all of us. We have a responsibility to take care of the Earth. Uh, You know, one of the things I emphasize is that the environment is the most important issue of our times. You know, you look at what's going on. And one thing about Idle No More is to create a lot of awareness about those things. Uh, it's a movement that's spreading, it's gone beyond the borders, uh, it's being recognized worldwide. And I, 
I think a lot of people are just fed up with what's going on with the environment. We have a lot of prophecies that tell us about this, about environmental destruction. And uh, in those prophecies, we're told that there's a time, the time of the seventh fire, when we have to come together. And, and so part of what I do is share some of the teachings that I know so non-Native people can be with us in, in the struggle. Is this gathering here and this variety of races and ages of people evidence that we may be living in the time of the seventh fire? Yes, because the seventh fire talks about this. And uh, if we can light the eighth fire, that would mean that would mean a time when we have peace and goodwill on earth. But it's going to take a while to get to that point. And uh, it's really the responsibility of non-native people to take up these issues. They're the ones that control the technology. They're the ones who, who uh, control technology over the environment. So the idea is that for non-native people to choose a path, do they want to choose the path of technology, which will destroy the earth, or do they want, or do they want to choose a path that will save the earth? And so, again, part of what I do is I try to teach people about this thing so they have a better understanding. I've heard that there is some controversy uh, between uh, sort of the, uh, and I don't want to create the controversy, but that there are people who saying, for example, the issue of wolves or the issue of wild rice, that's separate from Idle No More. Can you talk about that? I don't see it that way. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are differences between what we have here and what's going on in Canada. Uh, you know, part of our uh, part of our, part of our effort here, like today, is to show our support, show solidarity with the First Nations. But at the same time, when we look at what's happening in Canada, we can relate to that to what's happening down here. So the the lines get kind of blurred as to. Uh, what we're doing. I mean, I think it's really important, especially up here in Duluth. Uh, this, to me, this is ground zero for mining. And I've been coming here for two years and talking about that issue. And uh, so part of it is to educate and have outreach with non native people and, and with our own people to uh, step up and speak up and, and, and stand up to these issues. So you mentioned it's ground zero. Um, I'm aware of just some history as a personal interest of mine, some local interest. Have you ever heard people talk about what's called uh, Chief Buffalo's claim in Duluth? I'm not familiar with that, no. So this area where we're standing right now is part of land that was deeded to uh, Chief Buffalo of uh, Red Cliff by the United States government. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we happen to be you know, standing on part of that claim right now. Yeah. Well, you know, a long time ago, the bands were spread out in a lot of different areas. I mean, after the treaties, they were placed on the reservations. And uh, so the reservations uh, mark a, a line of where they live. But a long time ago, you know, we, we didn't have central villages. We, we lived out in bands. Uh, particularly, we, we lived in bands according to our families and our clans. You know, I'm from Red Lake, but I know that my family came from a, a band called uh, Chief Red Bear, and he lived in the Red River Valley. So he lived a long oh, ways west. from Red Lake. And the other thing, too, about Red Lake, and this is true with uh, many tribal nations that are along the so-called border up north, a lot of our land extended into Canada. Red Lake used to go into Canada until they created that border. So, you know, there, there's, there's those connections that, uh, that we're making, and I don't know more, is uh, bringing back that knowledge. Miigwech, just uh, if you uh, feel comfortable doing so, we would welcome you to introduce yourself in a traditional way. Uh, Thank you.
Miskokami way saga Garnane. And what I said, uh, my my Ojibwe spirit name is Every Day. That was the name that was given to me. I belong to the Bear Clan, and I'm from the Red Lake and Nishinaabe Nation. Which? Okay.